Hey, welcome back. It's still um, breakfast plus TV Africa, and uh, I'm glad to know that you're still there. I'm still Nyamgul Agaji. That hasn't changed, and I'm here with uh, uh, Coffee Battles. And um, we're looking at what has played out in Adamawa, what we all of us are calling drama. Like Kofi would say, that uh, politicians are creating uh, content comedy content that even the comedians that parade themselves as comedians cannot create because there are so many things that are happening. But right now, we'd like to look at the legal implications of what is happening in Adamawa State. The elections have come, but they have not gone because people are on the streets protesting that uh, the needful should be done. And I don't know the needful by whose standards because some other people are saying what has been done has been done already and it was done well while others are saying that it was not done well. But what does the law say about what has happened? And we're glad to have joining us right now, Justice Uhwebu, a human rights lawyer, uh, talking with us from Abuja. Good morning and welcome to the program, Justice. Good morning, it is my pleasure also. Yeah. All everybody is asking for, eventually your name is it. They want justice in Adamawa State. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now, what, what is your take on what is going on in Adamawa from the announcement of someone who was supposed to have won to others protesting that the needful has not been done and the stalling by INEC of announcing the results of the election that has already been, uh, been carried out? What is your take? Can you hear me, Justice? Justice, can you hear me? Okay, right now, Justice cannot hear us. Uh, yes, so. yes, indeed. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do our best to reconnect with Justice yeah. Uwebu, but um, the Damawa story is quite, um, quite interesting. Very interesting. Uh, I mean, we had reporters on the ground. We had um, correspondents all over the place. In, uh, in a, and I was watching a report, interestingly, in Yamgo. Okay. Uh, okay, Justice is back. Justice let's, is back. Let's just take it. Uh, Justice, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, did you get my question or I should repeat it? Yes, yes, I did, I did. Okay, go ahead and well, tell uh, us. It is actually quite unfortunate because um, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what is happening. Uh, I next had earlier told Nigerians that they were ready for this election, for this exercise. And uh, suffice to say that this is not the first time I next is conducting an election. But unfortunately, this particular election has been marred with so many infractions and issues here and there and all the way. It's a shame uh, what is playing out in Adamawa. And what happened is just because Adamawa people have to come out and say, look at what is happening. It's happened in so many other states. I have to tell you the truth. But the only thing is that many people decided to, well, no problem, let's leave it for God. And because that has been the 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 the, 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 the slogan of Nigerian, a typical Nigerian man will leave it to God. It's so unfortunate uh, that INEC will conduct election and the needful will not be done. And the INEC staff will go and do a different thing altogether from the norms why they are performing their duty. It's so unfortunate. Really, really unfortunate. But what does the law say about who has the right to announce results? We're not even looking at whether the results were announced at the right time, but who is vested with that power to announce results from a state or from a polling unit or whatever? Well, you see that uh, every state uh, has, you know, INEC has uh, what we call division of labor. Every state has the resident electoral commissioner who has the right to announce the result of every state. While in the Pune unit, the uh, the INEC officer there has the, the right to announce results as cast at that Pune unit. In fact, these things are so clear. We can't come up and be talking again and again and again and again every time. They know the right thing, but nobody wants to do the right thing. So now, if the if the red commissioner has announced a fake result for one reason or the other, can you not say that result should stand? And moreover, from the fillers we are getting, or from what we had, as at the time of the announcement of the results, about 10 
local governments have not been collected. So I mean, where I mean, where where on earth do you do such thing? One of your senators, well, not your senator, but I will say you, because you're dressed like one of his constituents <laughs> from the cap you're wearing. <laughs> you know, you're dressed like this. He's on the senator representing Adama North. Uh, the uh, um, he is a uh, senator Ishaku Abo, um, very popular senator, or let me say, uh, well, let's say famous uh, or infamous for what his one of his actions, which he happened to have gotten away with. Now he's saying that um, INEC can't come out today to say that those that result declared by the wreck Adamawa is null and void. In fact, um, he's reacting to the words of National Commissioner Information and Voter Education of INEC, uh, um, Fesus Okoye, your, your learned colleague, uh, that the actions of the Adamawa wreck are, quote, null, void, and of no effect. And what Senator Abo is, is saying, he, I mean, he voted for the Electoral Act. He was part of those who voted I or nay. I think he voted I. He's saying that um, uh, the Electoral Body's proclamation is insignificant as backed by the Electoral Act. Um, and he's saying that INEC cannot nullify, quote, INEC cannot nullify an election that has been announced. They don't have that power. And he's referring to Section 65 of the Electoral Act which he says does not operate in isolation, isolation rather, as there is also section 149, which states that, uh, and I quote, notwithstanding any other act provision of this act, any defect arising from any actions taken by an official of the commission in relation to any notice, form, or document made or given, or other things done by the official in pursuance to the provisions of the constitution or of this act, or any rules made thereunder remain valid unless otherwise challenged and declared invalid by a competent court of law or tribunal. Oga, please break this one down for <laughs> us. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, the, the, the truth is this. I said something. If actually, as, as at the time of the announcement of that result, that about 10 local governments has not been collected and added up, and if the red commission are there, goes on to announce the results, INEC has every right to stop the announcement until that result is added up. Because, you see, when you're talking, I know where he's going. What he's simply saying by the portions of the, 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 the electoral act is that every election matter has to go to court. It's the court that has the right to, de to determine whether that election was proper or not whether to nullify the election or not. But here, if INEC declares a, a, a particular election inconclusive, I think the word, the proper word here that should be used is inconclusive. And not to say you are nullifying the election. But if actually, as at the time, the election, the result was announced, there were still some local government that have been expected. The proper word for INEC to use is that the election is inconclusive. It's as simple as that. They are not nullifying any, any results or any proclamation made so far. He could have made the, the, the announcement in error or whatever. So even if he made an announcement in error and it is discovered that some local governments are still being awaited, INEC has the result to declare that this election is inconclusive. It's just as simple as that. Well, but from the sections that were read, does it give uh, INEC official, like the REC that we're talking about right now, the power to announce results? Because our understanding is that whoever should announce this result should be the returning officer who is not the REC. Now the REC is taking the powers or the functions of the, of the returning officer and announcing the results, which we've never heard. Does that portion of the Electoral Act give power to a REC to announce results rather than the returning officer? You know, if you look at the, the Electoral Act, there are internal mechanisms the INEC itself holds and operates. You have the resident electoral commissioner of that state. You now have the returning officer. Mm -hmm. Now, for example, 
If you watch the presidential election, for example, the INEC chairman, the INEC chairman is there. And the INEC chairman would call on the on the rec to come and present his results. And once he presents that results, at the end of the day, the results will be accepted. And at the end of the day, the INEC chairman will declare the results. So the truth here now is this. If the procedure was not followed, because the, the, the returning officer is actually supposed to collect all the results, he's supposed to be in charge of all the results from all the polling units, then they will now move to the uh, INEC office in the state, where the wreck will be on seat, and all the party agents on seat. Once the submission is thought and accepted, it will not be announced. So if all these procedures were not taken, it is neither here nor there. That election must be declared inconclusive. Oh. But but Justice Webu, going by the Electoral Act, which I'm looking at now, um, who announces um, the winner in a governorship election? We know who does that in the presidential election. In the governorship, by the Electoral Act, who announces the winner? After all the results have been well, collected. Like for, in, in the governorship, like, I, I, that was why I tried to put a comparison between the governorship and the presidential. It is an open thing. It is done in the open. And once it is not done in the open, for example, nobody has to go and announce results arbitrarily without following the procedure. I think that is what has happened here. The issue of who announces the results, whether it's the returning officer or whether it's the wreck, here and now, will even be put pending. But the question we should be asking ourselves here, was the proper thing put done? Was the rule followed? And if you look at the whole thing holistically, it was not followed. So for me, that election should be declared inconclusive. Mm. But, 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 but just, yeah. just a quick follow on. Uh, I'm, I'm yeah. um, you know, you, you, it's like, I think what you're saying is like uh, we're saying you went to court and then the judge, you know, who by law is empowered to give a ruling, gives that ruling or makes a judgment or gives an order. And then you say, oh, the law wasn't followed or the constitution says ABC or you fail to look at this thing. And they, they, it's true, proven that the judge, uh, the judge in, in that matter did not follow the laid down rules of procedure. So blatantly refused to follow the law. But there's nothing you can do about it. You can only vacate that judgment by the order of a superior court or by the ruling of a superior court, whichever it is. So, so uh, is this not the case that the wreck... No, 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 no. Let, 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 let me tell you one thing. A court, a court can also overrule itself. Hmm. A court can overrule itself, especially... When a judgment or another was has been gotten by fraud, the same court can set aside that same judgment. If it is proved that that judgment or ruling was gotten by fraud, maybe the party that got the judgment misled the court to give that judgment. You can apply to the same court to set aside that particular judgment, saying that it was gotten by fraud. But it's not, is that not what uh, Isha Kwabo is saying? Is that you can't, INEC can't on its own just say the, the uh, pronouncement uh, of Iraq is null and void. That you have to go to court because he has made uh, the pronouncement. It's like a judicial pronouncement like you're saying. You, a lawyer can't say, or the National Judicial Council can't say um, what um, Justice um, uh, Uwebu has pronounced That's, um, as a judge now. Justice Justice Uwebu who has said, as, as ruled, is null and void. It, it, it may have to be vacated by a court. Like you said, the court is kind of a role itself. Yes, it's too, yes, it has to be vacated by either the same court that gave the judgment. Understand me? That is where I am bringing INEC in now. And that's why I said, if actually that the, 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 uh, the principles were not followed, like for example, like what we are saying here now, the INEC itself can decide that this 
election is inconclusive. I'm not talking about annulment of the election. INEC has no right to annul the election at that period. When somebody has made a pronouncement, even if the just, person just that like made the pronounce, saying, even if the person that made the pronouncement should not make the pronouncement, will it still hold? Yeah, if the person that made the pronouncement is not the person by law that is supposed to make the pronouncement, definitely it's a no hold. That is where we have conflict of laws. But remember that the person still remains an agent of the commission. Because that what I mean by nature is the staff of INEC. So by that, what he what has happened, he has acted ultraverance. Because he has acted above his scope. And that is where corruption comes in. That is where other things come. So at that point in time, I think the problem here is that well, the, the, the deed has been done. But if INEC comes out and say the election of Adamawa is inconclusive, and not that they have cancelled the election of Adam Adam that has been pronounced. If they say it's inconclusive, everybody will understand it. But if they not say if they have cancelled it, that the election that have been announced, the result have been announced have been cancelled, it's only the court that will have the right and the decision to cancel results. Which means it has to go to tribunal. But is it not too late to say it's inconclusive? Because for something to be announced is assumed to be conclusive. So is it not too late at this time to say the election is inconclusive? What are they going to do when there's an Remember I said made? something. Remember I said something. The figures we got was that 10 local governments, at the time of the announcement of the results, we are still being expected. Yeah. So can you not say you go ahead and announce the results? What I next should do immediately as a data was to say, no, this election is inconclusive. After some supplementary elections we are just held last Saturday mm. in some states where elections we are declared inconclusive. Mm. Okay, let, let me just, I don't know if it's, this is a digression, but let me draw a, a comparison here. It's, what's the math difference between what has happened in Adamawa and what happened say in the presidential election because as we speak right now i doubt if all the results from all the states have been uploaded to the irev which means there are some other ones that are not in public glare because they are not on their portal right now and the same thing in adamawa state they are saying there are some that they didn't get physically in adamawa state so they cannot take that announcement of a winner so it is null and void that's all the, the language they all use. the results all the results in the presidential arrived at Abuja. Physically. The only thing that it was not on the portal okay. is, a, is, is a different thing. You cannot compare with what has happened in Adamawa. All the results, the presidential results, arrived at Abuja. And all the returning officers came out openly and presented their results before it was concluded and the winner was announced. But this one is a departure from that process. What we are saying here is that we have it on record by the media that as at the time, collection was still ongoing. Somebody went ahead to announce the results when collection was still ongoing. So you cannot say that justice has been done. Then what then happens to those local governments? that we are not collected or that have not arrived the headquarters. So if you now announce the results and those local government now arrive the headquarters, what happened? Another thing you should ask yourself, as at where was this result announced? Was it announced in the presence of all the party agents as stipulated by the rule? So these are certain things you look at. And INEC in its own, and in its wisdom, and in its powers, has its own mandate on what to do, the procedure and the modus operandi. And once it is not met, INEC can say, well, based on these facts, based on these facts, we declare this result inconclusive until we get the other local governments that are still being awaited. If you remember, in the presidential, there were several times the INEC chairman 
rose for one for a few hours in order to give room for other results to arrive. Okay. All right. Um, um, the the um, the procedures are clearly outlined in uh, the uh, guidelines and regulations and guidelines for the conduct of elections as released in 2022 by INEC, um, which talks about you know the state coalition and returning officers. You know, it talks about officers um, completing form EC8E, uh, signing it, and then uh, announcing loudly the results, and then of course um, distributing copies to polling agents and all that, submitting the original to the state resident electoral uh, commissioner, all right, the original copy of form EC8D, and then the declaration of the results form EC8E, together with other um, uh, other, other election materials, handed over to the state resident electoral commissioner. So what I see is that we in the media will normally say INEC has announced the results of uh, a governorship election. INEC has declared the results of a governorship election. But what you seem to be saying is you agree with uh, Senator Isha Kwabu uh, that um, only a court order or can vacate this announcement to announcement by INEC. Yeah, but for, for in fact, it, for the avoidance of doubts and in order not to create unnecessary uh, chaos, I think the best thing at this moment is for the party or the other party that felt the result was not properly announced or that they won the election and the another person was black, used to go to court. Because the moment you, you bring up these things on the table, the court will not waste time in nullifying that election or... The courts on its own cannot call for the remaining local governments, add them up, and a, a winner will definitely emerge. I think at this point in time, in order not to start uh, having unnecessary issues, the best thing is to go to court. All right. All right. You know, really, you know, you know like, like they say. Have, I make, uh, <laughs> when I know, I make notice this, I make up to have immediately make an announcement as I then that the election is inconclusive instead oh. of allowing it for some days oh. before coming up to say anything. All right. Like, like they say, go to court. <laughs> go it, to it's court. now, it's go now to court. very funny. It's, it's a very go, clear go to court situation, to right? Court. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. But, okay, yeah. now, now I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just on the side of some people that are, that are calling um, for stiffer measures uh, to be... Uh, matters on the person who did this. If he did this, um, he did not follow the law, he did not follow protocol, that means he has tried to destroy democracy as they are putting it. And what INEC did was to suspend him from INEC activities for a certain time. And maybe after that, they will transfer him to another state or something, just hide him somewhere there. And people are calling for stiffer measures to be meted out on him. Because if he did what he shouldn't do, and now putting the, the polity into this kind of situation, then a slap on the wrist is not good enough. That is what some people are saying. What do you think? Well, I, I, I agree with them. And not only that, you see, people talked about prosecuting electoral offenders and all the rest. NEC officials will also partake on this. Because in fact, let me tell you the truth. INEC, INEC staff or officials are even the number one people that, you know, violate these uh, 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 electoral provisions. They are the first people. Like we have been hearing and the fillers have been coming that uh, uh, two billion naira was, uh, was scattered away in order to do, to announce this result. And if that is so, where are we heading to? Where are we? In fact, this person that did, that committed this, Act or atrocity, let me put it that way, because it's a criminal act, should by now be arrested and prosecuted so that others will take a leave from there. So that it's, it will serve as a deterrent to others. Let me tell you also, in the last election, 2019, some, something like this happened in so many states, especially in some uh, senatorial uh, elections and all the rest. Why? Why? A uh, 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 collection was still ongoing. Some people went and, and declared themselves winner on, on the radio and television, and, and nothing happened. And that is why some of these things is happening today, because of the impunity that is operating in this country. So I think we should use Adamawa 
as 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 a case study and use that person as an escape goat. All this nonsense should stop for whatever reason. But who should champion this cause? You know, because uh, the police were there, as you're saying. Every every person that is supposed to uh, stand up and do the needful was there. The high-ranking officers were there while these announcements were made. And somebody was arguing that this arrest cannot happen until someone uh, petitions the police and says, go and arrest this person. And, and the person who was talking was thinking civil society organizations should stand up now and protest and write petitions and all that. Do they really need a, a, a petition before the police can arrest who they need to arrest? Does the police have to wait for someone else before they can do the arrest? And you talked about INEC not being able to prosecute and all that. So if INEC cannot ask for the arrest of this person, who should champion this cause? You see, that is where we come on the issue of integrity and issue of institutions. I have said it time without number that the institutions in Nigeria has failed. That is our problem. Because the INEC, INEC, INEC we are talking about, INEC are the staff that is working here. The INEC chairman and other officers or officials, and they are the, the INEC we are talking about. And if somebody has done anything wrong, what is supposed to do? In fact, the whole thing is that the whole thing starts and stops on the decks of the insecurity. And that is why we are saying that if this country will move forward for good, it is in the hands of the insecurity. It will fall, it is in the hands of the insecurity. So it doesn't matter who is there. But if the institutions are working, immediately what the INEC chairman should do is to call for the arrest of whoever that perpetrated that uh, crime. And the person will be arrested. You don't need for civil, uh, 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 civil society organizations to begin writing petitions and all the rest. No, you don't need to that. And again, yeah, I'm also putting it on the executive. The police we're talking about is also an arm of the executive. The executive controls the police. And what did the police ask to pledge? That when the police can arrest when somebody has been suspected to have committed an offense likely to commit an offense or about to commit an offense. That's what we call reasonable suspicion. So in this situation, like you rightly said, policemen we are there. But you, most policemen may not have known this position we are talking about now. So now knowing that the person who announced the result was not supposed to announce the result as at the time we did, are you are we supposed to wait for the commission of police in that state? to deter his men to go and get that person arrested, whether the INEC chairman gives instruction or not. Because the police is there to do its duty as that when due. That is the problem we're having. But because of the slogan of he who pays the piper, dictates the tune, you're waiting for instruction from somebody or the other. Do your own duty, you will not do. But if police see some boys on the road, they will arrest them and say they are suspect. They are suspecting them to be Yahoo boys. They are searching their phones. They are searching their laptops. On reasonable suspicion. Now, something happened in your eyes. There's no reasonable suspicion again. You are waiting to get instruction from somebody. It is a shame. All right. All right. This uh, um, so, so b before we go, um, uh, Aisha Binani went ahead to um, uh, accept the the, the uh, election results. Yamgul is laughing, <laughs> wow. and uh, she accepted it, gave an acceptance speech. Um, you know, there's a lot of sentimentality with this particular election. You know, uh, Nigerians, as with other things, are uh, some some you know, Nigerians are being sentimental. Say, you know, it's a woman. You know, and uh, it would be so so nice to see a woman emerge as governor. You know, and um, are being soft on the lady and taking it easy. I'm sure it was Yamgul or myself, or even you, uh, Al Haji uh, Uwebu. <laughs> they, people have descended on you. People are taking. Now, do you think this woman deserves some, uh, uh, some, some sort of attention, maybe condemnation for um, going ahead to accept the victory instead of saying this is well, what happened or playing politics? With no, no, no. You don't. You, you see, we are in a we are in a society where uh, people don't condemn anything bad, especially when he favors them. So I'm not surprised. I was not expecting it, but it takes integrity for somebody to see something and condemn it, if you remember. You see some 
let me give you an example. There are a few governors in Nigeria, even in 2015, 2019, during the election period, they were saying the election was not free and fair, it was not free and fair, but immediately they were declared winner. They did not talk about the election was not free and fair. So can you not benefit from an act of a bad process? That is the issue. So for the fact that she, she has been um, benefiting from the act of a bad process, if she is prudent enough and if she has integrity, she's supposed to come out and tell Nigerians, no, this is not the procedure. The procedure was not followed. Can we please be patient? Let the procedure be followed. If at the end of the day, the election was announced later and she did not win, Nigerians would take her as somebody with integrity. And I believe that she will get appointment one, somewhere or the other. Look at what happened in Abia State. That woman today is being adored like a god or like a goddess just because she did the right thing. So what are we saying? All right. Uh, um, thank you very much. Just a quick, quick, uh, uh, quick fire question to you. You can make your answer brief. Um, this Adabao election, can the entire 2023 election, but the governorship and state uh, elections, can they be judged based on what INEC has displayed in Adamawa State? Some are saying you can't discredit the entire election just because of one state and the fiasco there. It's not true. You see, injustice somewhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We must live above board. If this kind of thing can happen, you now ask yourself what has happened in some other states where people did not speak or people did not take recognizance of it or people de decided to keep quiet. The truth is this, INEC has not done well. I was expecting INEC to have lived above board. I was expecting what I call law of, uh, uh, you know, progression. They were diminishing. Since how many years? 1999, the same INEC making the same mistake every day. So where are we going? Despite the huge amount of money that was voted for this election, every election period, they were voting more money. Every election period were voting more money, more introduction and all the rest. And nothing to show for it. It's a shame. If I neck will be scrapped, I think the best thing is to I neck I to be scrapped. Let us look for another body. Or maybe we should change that name from I neck to any other name. Let's see whether things can get better. I think, I think it's not doing well at all. All right. We have the uh, uh, CNPP, which is a coalition of uh, political parties in Nigeria, saying that this Adamo election is, uh, if care is not taken, will wipe away any legacy that, that would have remained of uh, the Muhammad Buhari uh, years as president of uh, the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Do you feel that this is enough to, to wipe the record uh, or to, I mean, taint the legacy, let's say, of Buhari and to take away any good legacy that he would have left behind? Well, for me, Buhari is not INEC. In as much as he can call the INEC chairman to order, but he's still not INEC. INEC chairman knows what to do. The police also knows. What, he, will you tell me that the IG has not heard about what is happening? What of the, 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 the commissioner of police in that state? And also, he has nothing to do with Buhari. I don't think if the INEC chairman has ordered for the arrest of the person who did this, that Buhari will come out to defend it. I'm not sure. So let us not put every door we know that on easy lies the head that wears the crown. The whole thing still goes to executive. But here, INEC is an independent body that should work on its own, that should do the right thing. So for me, I don't see it that way. Generally, do you think INEC broke any law in these elections, be it presidential or or governorship election or state elections, do you think they broke any law? Well, like I said before, INEC didn't do well. Are we talking about the beavers? Are we talking about the accreditation? Are we talking about the, the, the process of the uh, declining results and all the rest? Are we talking about the transmission of results to the porter as they told Nigerians, as they promised? Let me tell you one thing. There's what we call social contracts. Once you have come out and tell the people, look at what they're going to do. And remember, the money voted for INEC is the money of Nigeria. We are all stakeholders in this country. Provided our money is involved, they owe us a duty of care. And provided that duty of care is not done, INEC has failed woefully. As simple as that. Simply as that. Hmm. But failing is different from breaking the law. It's the well, law that is. I asked. Yes. 
So they broke the law. Okay, that's, that's yeah, they Kofi. Yes, right. uh, and um, um, uh, the, the, the debate as to whether, you know, this brand of, uh, <laughs> this brand of democracy is going to work for Nigeria. I mean, looking at the, 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 the disgrace that, that we've seen, disgraceful acts we've seen in different parts of the country. I mean, you know, uh, professors announcing results that people can't even understand or recognize. Um, uh, in the electoral empire, uploading results or announcing results different from what was uploaded, and a whole lot of, uh, um, I mean, um, uh, actions by politicians as well, you know, to subvert the process from all sides, from different parties. You know, massive rigging. This time it's, uh, it's open rigging, and everybody, nobody is apologizing for it, They're saying go to court. You know, from different parties, different parties, not just one party. Justice Uwebo, do you feel that this brand of democracy that Nigeria is practicing, which we, we carbon copied from the West, will work in this country? We can, we can even leave Nigeria and talk about the African context. You know, is the African man, is the Nigerian man, woman, voter, um, able to, to, to be as democratic as the American? Should, do we need to evolve well, our the, own brand of democracy? The, the truth is that... Um, this is not the first time we are having elections in Nigeria. If you remember in 1989, elections, even before that time, the era of NCNC, uh, NPP, NPN, and all the things we are not like. That's why I say that I thought uh, there was a called geometric progression. You know, Professor Rousseau, a, 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 a local jury, said that the law is to harmonize with the society. So I felt that by now, as we are growing, the implication of that is that the law grows with the society. As the society is growing, the law is supposed to be growing alongside with the society. So INEC is not growing. Rather, what we are experiencing today is what I call a lot of diminishing return. So our democracy is diminishing instead of progressing. I, 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 I never thought... It could be this. Look at what we are having today. We are still having issues of snatching of ballot papers. We are still having issue of touting in Nigeria and all the rest. I mean, where, where did you get it wrong? This we are supposed to be old time team, and up to now we are still operating this. And the impunity has weathered in to suppress the whole thing. For me, I have told people earlier before now that what we are expressing in Nigeria is not true democracy, but what I call quasi democracy. That is the truth. Oh, just all says. right. <laughs> this is an interesting, interesting thoughts. We have to leave it at that, yeah. and we have to say goodbye to you. Um, and all we can say is uh, Nagode uh, from from the way you are dressed. <laughs> yes, you are you are truly a civilized Nigerian. Mm. Uh, if not for the fact that elections are could be has been concluded, and I've said you are probably trying to, you are probably thinking of uh, contesting, contesting, you know, trying to appeal to your northern. You know, no, very, northern. very soon, very soon, I will do that. All right, Ranka all right. did this. Ranka did. Just we will join us live via uh, Zoom Thank from Abuja. You. He's Thank a human you. rights lawyer. Thank you very much. Mm. Very interesting conversation. Yeah, there. it, it is yeah, very going. interesting, and uh, having insight into what the law says about everything is yeah. good, uh, but. It still is a drama, and it's it, very it funny. Is. Is. Funny, is. funny on one hand because you don't expect these people to do this, and very disappointing on the other hand because we have grown to a stage where we should have known better, we should do better. And when people say a lot of things that are being done now is done because of hunger, sometimes I just it's not hunger. You know, it's not hunger. <laughs> you know, you know, you you talked about something very important, and I will ask the same question: Will the uh, wreck Adamawa? face the maximum penalty, you know, applicable for his actions? Or will he walk away with a slap on his wrist? On his wrist. Well, we're yet to see that. But, you know... Can we predict? Some, some Can I the, predict? I would, uh, some of the... I think you know the answer. I think you know the answer. <laughs> I, it's not from my mouth you will hear it. But you see, who is going to have the moral standing to give the kind of punishment that he deserves to him? Knowing that, okay, there's been talks about Every election that has happened here, there's been talk about money changing hands, going to the people that we, we know are not hungry, but they're giving them uh, lots and lots of money and all that. And who is going to accuse who of collecting money and doing the wrong and all that? So by now, like he said, he should be arrested. Mm. But nobody's talking about that. Why? Yeah. Maybe because he also knows some skeletons in some people's cupboards and all that. So I don't think they will so do much. If, if you if you if you want him to to shout, you go and then arrest him. 
But um, um, so you might be invariably saying, from what you're saying, he may get away with it. He with will the, get with, away. Just a fine. He will get away with the fine. You just said something with about, just, uh, about uh, Senator Abo. What he did, oh, yeah. will he still be a senator today if, oh, yeah. he, if he, the right thing was to be done? We're talking about Ojuzo Kalu right now, trying to be the Senate president. I don't even know if his case has finished in court. He was, he was, he was in jail and he came out. Well, Ojuzo Kalu will tell you that Donald Trump is also facing charges and he may even so? run for president from prison, so he's not. You know, <laughs> <laughs> anyway. You know, you know, I was listening to, um, okay, we, we have to take a break now and okay, we'll be back to. Uh, wrap this up in a second conversation, yeah. hopefully. So yeah. please stay with us.